Greetings! I am Resplendent Seraph, and I'm going to be playing East 8. This is actually the second attempt of this. The first time I had streamed this live on Twitch, the controller decided to um, completely flake out. So we're just going to be doing, for this part one, the very intro of the game, just for completion purposes. I'm going to be doing a little bit of voiceovers. I'm going to try and get through it fairly quickly because the very beginning can be almost there's it's like it's a very tutorial level type of thing but I do want to at least make sure that this playthrough that I put on YouTube is going to be complete and so um like I said I'm Resplendent Seraph I play a bunch of RPGs a lot of chill games a lot of times I stream live on Twitch I don't have a particularly set schedule at the moment but who knows feel free to follow me over there if you'd like to participate live otherwise all my stuff ends up getting uploaded onto YouTube in fairly short order afterwards. Most of my viewers are, are on this platform, so welcome, and let's enjoy. My favorite of all of the East games, I'm kind of operating under the assumption that if you are, I'm going to switch to the in-game mode here, I'm also assuming at this point that for the most part, by now, you're aware of my playthroughs. However, if East 8 is your introduction to my channel, Feel free to visit all of my other kind of playthroughs on all of the other East games. I've played so far uh, one through six through the completion on stream. East five in particular was an interesting one because it never got released in the West. So that was fun. That was actually really fun to play, uh, even though it's a very average game, but it's certainly not bad. It certainly wasn't to the point where it should have been franchise killing, but so it goes. So anyway, I'm trying to play through all of them. I'm going to be playing Monstrum Nox next as we see some of these intro screens as they play here. And um, like I said, not Monstrum Nox will be next. I'm going to do a new game here because I'm not going to be uh, going through. I'm also going to be playing this on normal, so we'll select that game mode for now. And chronologic. Okay, we are not the tools of any higher power. Each of us is the very embodiment of free will. I like to try to read these as much as possible. Even so, there comes a time in every man's life when he must answer a call to destiny beyond human understanding. How will you respond when that moment strikes you? Truly nothing is more awe-inspiring than one who unceasingly pushes beyond the threshold of courage and will. I had hoped to embody such an ideal myself. Even now, many decades later, my awe for her remains unwavering. Adel Kristen, preface to Travelogue of the Gady Sea. The first time I did this live, I did not read fast enough because I didn't count for that to fade nearly as quickly as it does. So chronologically, this takes place just after East 5 when Adol and Dogi leave Sandria. I'm not going to spoil anything for that game in the event that you want to go back and watch that, but it was fun to find and meet characters in East 5 who then later on appear in East 6, which chronologically happens after this game. The, chrono the chronology of this series is all over the place. They do not go in order from 1 through, at this point, 10. So here we are on board the Lombardia. It's a beautiful game. I was very concerned about playing the Steam version, but so far it seems to be running very, very well. I originally played this on my PlayStation. It also ran very well on the PS4. And there's our protagonist, Adol Kristen. Our short, red-haired swordsman. Yo, Adol! You're taking a break, too? And here's his friend, Dogie. Otherwise known as the Ooh, Wall Crusher. What a nice breeze! believe how suffocating it gets in the cargo hold. Gotta say, that uniform looks pretty good on you. Awfully nice of him to let us hitch a ride to Aresia in exchange for work. They got me moving cargo around and you helping out as a sailor on this voyage. And they're even paying and feeding us too. Pretty sweet deal if you ask me. Hmm. 
we need to thank the captain. And also, I'm going to be doing a lot of my own commentary as I play. Yeah. Man, that Captain Barbaros. He looks intimidating, but he's a good man. Dependable, too. Thanks to him, we'll be able to hit the next stop on our journey once we dock. I'm a little sad we got to say goodbye to Xandria. But there's no time to be moping when adventure's waiting for us. I'm looking forward to it, buddy. So, Adam, what is our next stop anyway? Once we dock in Sunyan, Greek is just around the bend. Wherever the wind may take us. <laughs> What, are you a poet now? Or are you trying to talk like Luta? Luta, of course, being a character in East 1 and 2. If you ask me, I would have preferred heading west, along the coast of Africa. Whoa, whoa! Are you guys voyaging to Altago? Altago is this world's oh, version of... You. Carthage. Or at least it's been... That's always been my takeaway. <laughs> You bet we are. Adol has always been looking for a way to get to Altago. Unbelievable. You do know about the conflict between the Kingdom of Altago and the Roman Empire, don't you? Roman Navy vessels are pretty much the only ships that can enter that region of the sea. <laughs> I heard that you're an adventurer. That just seems reckless. Yeah, well, there's never a dull moment when I'm tagging along with this guy. True. Adel can't walk more than three steps without stepping in some kind of adventure. What do you say, Kathy? You like tagging along too? <laughs> Thanks, but I'll pass. Anyway, you two, break time's almost over. Dogi, I need you to get back to work in the cargo hold. Back on the clock already, huh? No problem. I'll head down right now. Get you later, Adol. No, Dogi can handle the rest of the work on his own. Hmm. Please go see Captain Barbaros. He told me to send you to his quarters once your job was finished. The captain's quarters can be found at the quarter deck, near the stern of the ship. And just in case we didn't know where that was, the camera is going to pan over very conveniently. And they're going to talk, do intro tutorial stuff, how to use DLC, blah, blah, blah. Parts don't run. So that's one of the interesting things. Rumors are reserved for honored guests. You cannot enter. So we're eventually going to get a clue to who that is later. Bearing north, northeast. Ah, Ado. Thank you for coming. And now we're going to get some very required exposition before the main plot of the story unfolds. Please have a seat. Captain Barbaros is a big dude. As I recall, you introduced yourself to me as an adventurer. Tell me, do you know of the Isle of Saren? And I think that's an allusion to the uh, the sirens of old Greek mythology, when uh, they would sing songs that were so captivating that sailors would sail directly into uh, the jagged uh, shores and you know, beach themselves and then be prey. I've heard of it. Yes. Very impressive. The Gate is Sea is home to many islands, as you're no doubt aware. She's a treacherous sea to navigate. More ships than I can count have run afoul of her jagged islands. But the Isle of Saren has a particularly fearsome reputation. For you see, every ship that approaches the island sinks by some mysterious happenstance. Every ship sinks? Yes. Its surrounding waters are perilous to navigate. But that alone does not explain why so many ships sink. About five years ago, a Roman vessel conducting an exploratory voyage approached the island. The sea was calm that day, and ran afoul of nothing. Yet I heard it was pulled under all the same. 
Grecian mythology speaks of monsters called Sirens, which lure ships to their doom. The pirates who first discovered that island declared it cursed ground and named it accordingly. Is there any way to go ashore? Maybe. Hmm. I didn't expect you to ask that. Unfortunately, no one alive knows the answer to that question. The unlucky ones who have set foot on the island were never seen or heard from again. Even the saltiest sailors to voyage the gate to sea can tell you nothing about the island. I'd at least like to see it. I cannot approach the island, but when we pass by it, I will let you know. It seems my tale did not but stoke the fires of your adventurous spirit. I share this tale with every new member of my crew. When I first told Cathew, he was so frightened that he refused to leave his quarters. And of course, Adol's like, <gasps> adventure? But I see you're made of sterner stuff than he, lad. Um, thank you. <laughs> Now then, I'm sorry to keep you so long, but I have a favor to ask of you. I insist on holding a small welcome party whenever new passengers come aboard. I want you to attend the party and provide security. Security? Me? Um, yes. I've been a captain long enough to have seen many people during my years at sea. Between your skill and temperament, you are indeed the perfect man for the job. Please. Speak to Cathu for the details about your assignment. I know you won't let me down at all. And so this is an opportunity for us to meet the uh, crew and all of the passengers. It's basically a preview of every character that's going to appear in this game. Good evening, passengers. I'm Captain Barbaros. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you choosing the Lombardia for your seafaring needs. With four masts, and at 50 melia in length, this vessel is the largest of the passenger ships that voyage between Zandria and Aresia. All right, Adol. Since you're providing security, let's go over your responsibilities. I need you to patrol the passenger compartment and the main deck. Keep a close watch for any passengers who seem suspicious or dangerous. How long do you want me to patrol? Let me think. Just patrol until I give you the go-ahead to stop. And if you see any interesting guests, feel free to chat them up. But don't forget that these people are our guests, so please, be respectful towards them. Aye, right, sir. <laughs> well, aren't you enthusiastic? Anyway, looks like the captain's almost done with his speech. I'll do my part and start patrolling the cargo hold. We'll meet up later, Adol. Anyway, that's enough out of me. Please feel free to mix and mingle among yourselves as we continue on our voyage. I bid you all a wonderful evening. That is a gigantic room for a vessel of this type and this, you know, era. So again, more saving, loading. So anyway, like I said, these are all the characters that will uh, eventually at some point show up in this game, so we can talk <laughs> to them all. I'm sure you already know, but I'm only allowed to serve drinks to passengers right now. I'm sure there'll be plenty left over later, so we'll toss a few back after the party like we always do. Here's a uh, well-dressed man. Hmm. This wine is the definition of mediocre. You there. Why are you just standing there for? You should be bringing me a fine meal. I've heard this was a fine passenger vessel, but it barely reeks of the lower class. We got a cheerful lady. I feel bad for my family that boarded such a luxurious ship, but it was only one available. I think I'll make it up to them by recreating all the meals being served tonight. <laughs> I guess I better start studying the menu. So I'm going to talk to all of these people. We don't have to. We could actually just go on to the actual main point. But for the purposes of having a complete playthrough, I'm going to talk to just about everybody here. So here's a foppish young man. Showing a feast with commoners is more pleasant than I had expected. This blending of unconventional elements has all the makings of a masterpiece. Ah yes, I understand now. There's more of the Lombardia than meets the eye. 
Young butler, I've never seen my mistress look so surprised before. As a butler, I have a duty to support my mistress while she ventures beyond the scope of her naivete. Hmm, she can be a handful indeed. Talk to this dude, we got a married couple here. Hmm. I admit, I was a little nervous about traveling by ship. But we had a lovely trip. My wife looks so happy right now, so it was all worth it. I hope this feeling lasts forever. Here's her. <laughs> Thanks to my husband, we enjoyed a very nice trip abroad. And now we're home to home on this marvelous ship. I feel like the luckiest girl in all of Aresia. An assuming old lady. In all my years, I never thought I'd get to travel aboard such a magnificent ship. And the food is simply to die for. I have nothing but praise to offer. Hmm. Sailor. As you can see, there are people from all walks of life aboard the Bombardia. You can tell who the big shots are by how fancy they're dressed. That is true. The ship accepts all passengers, though. Another mercantile woman here. Looks like we're supposed to eat while standing. I assume this means we can eat as much as we want. Time to eat. Eat till I make it back. Eat, eat till I make back the ticket price. Let's see who else did we miss here. I don't think we missed anybody over here. I did see a character walking around earlier, but she doesn't seem to be in the room now. Did miss this dude? <laughs> Cheers to a wonderful night. This litter is quite delicious. There's nothing like a bit of a nip to round out a hard day's work. Okay, now I think I've talked to everybody. Oh. I don't think we took to the Groff Wrecking Man here. Mm, good thing I made it on board. Where is that damn fool? If I had known this was going to happen, I would have arranged the meetup beforehand. We got a well-dressed boy. Can't believe how worked up these stupid adults are getting over a party. Boring me to sleep. Maybe I'll explore the cargo hold. <laughs> yeah, you probably don't want to do that, kid. We got a bunch of people in here. We do have to talk to the other person in there, but uh, we'll talk to this yes. sailor. Some noble from Rom and staying in his first cat cabin. I'm getting real sick of this guy demanding that we bring him more food. Who does he think we are, his servants? Man, this sucks. All right, so this is where the one well-dressed man was. We need to talk to her. Why is he aboard this ship? My word, he always treats me like I'm a helpless child. So we've talked to the blonde girl. I don't think there's anybody important. Nope. We got a nun. Yes. I've been traveling across the Gaty Sea, visiting different locales to spread the teachings of the church. My parish church is based in Greek, which is, again, in East, a lot of these places are sort of fictional versions of real places. For some reason, they didn't conjugate it. Instead of Greece, they just call it Greek for some reason. Um, but it's, it's Greece they're talking about, which I've not returned to in two years. I'm sure the children there have grown so much. Can't wait to see their faces again. Like Garmin is Germany, for example. Mm. We gotta talk to the man in black. What do you want? I'm just gonna tell him. You look yes. suspicious. I uh, won't deny that. But I won't waste my time on people who just barge into rooms without even knocking first. So unless you have business with me, get out. <laughs> Make sure you shut the door behind you. Quietly. The doors automatically do kind of close behind you. So we need to come over here and talk to this person. Oh, that's Dogi. What's up? How'd you manage to get out of work in the galley? What? Patrol duty? Hmm, sounds like the perfect job for you. I mean, we're still trying to figure out where to go for our next big adventure. You'll probably hear some interesting stories while you're patrolling this big old ship. Who knows? Maybe you'll hear something that'll lead us to our next adventure. Let me know if you hear anything interesting. All right, so we did all that. Now I think we have to go up here. Pretty sure. Yep, now we got a mini-map. So now we can activate the mini-map. Well, okay, so yep, there's our next person. So any of the like little dots are people we could talk to. So we could talk to this person, proud woman. Ah, uh, this night breeze is a lovely change of pace from Ron's stagnant air. Hmm. You look like you know how to handle a sword. <laughs> Never mind. The night's so calm and quiet. There are other things we could talk about instead. Notice how she immediately, just by your poise, can tell you're good You're good with a sword. I hope your patrol finishes soon so you can relax for the evening. Sailor. I don't think the sailors have any particularly interesting things to say. Uh, here's Barbaros. Let's see. We're en route to Sunyan Port, but it'll be a few days before we finally arrive. If time permits, I would very much like to hear tales of your adventures, lad. In the meantime, continue your patrol. There's anything up here, although it is a nice view. 
I mean, it is a nice view. But yeah, major, uh, major Titanic vibes at this point. Uh, and here's another big man. Breeze feels nice. Great weather and a clear starry sky. Wait for me, my darling Crete. I'm coming home. At this point, now I think we... No. The uh, real voyage begins at night when visibility is nearly zero. While the passengers are partying in the banquet hall, we gotta stay on our toes and do our job. Glad to have you aboard, Adol. But I don't think... Yeah, alright, so now I gotta go back. Figure out who I have to talk to now. Ah, good. Hey, Adol, how's the security patrol going? No problems to report. But you can just say, everyone looks suspicious. That's so? That's good to hear. After all, we have a lot of interesting people on board. Looks like it's going to be another day of calm waters and smooth sailing. Way to jinx it, Kathy. By the way, the captain's been looking for you. I think he said we were about to pass by something soon. He should be back in his quarters by now. Why don't you pay him a visit? I'll go see him right away. Sounds good, Adol. I'll continue my patrol, my patrol for a little while longer. So I think if we go back to the galley, someone is there that wasn't there before. I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, this is the cargo hold. We don't need to want, need or want to go down there. Am I losing my mind? How do we get? How do we get to that one room? Kinda did want to go back there just to see if I missed talking to somebody. Oh, right. It's just straightforward. Go this way. Just got a little, little lost. I just want to make sure that nobody new popped up that wasn't here before. Oh no, everybody's still here. Okay. Never mind. Answers that question. But in this, for the sake of, again, for the sake of being a uh, completionist in this regard, I did want to just go through and make sure I didn't miss anything. I mean, we may still end up inadvertently missing something, but I'm going to try to accomplish as much as humanly possible. I'm going to try and do all the main missions, try and do all the sub, uh, sub quests and side quests. Oh, there you are. I'm sorry to bother you. I understand how busy you are right now. I just wanted to let you know that we're about to pass by it. You mean the Isle of Siren, of course. That's right. The Isle of Siren. The sky is clear tonight, so you may be able to see the island silhouette. The Isle of Siren is about 500 square kilometers, which is massive. The mountain range roughly 2,000... <laughs> Uh, I'm assuming that's 2,000 meters. They always do these different, like, words. I'm just going to use what I think they are. Uh, so, yeah, a mountain range roughly 2,000 meters high stretches across the island center. Since we're about to pass by, I'd figured you'd want to see it. Huh? So that's a preview. Uh, we're going to be on that Isle of Siren soon. And it's a massive, massive area. Impossible. We're in open waters. Assess the situation at once. Aye, aye, sir. <sighs> We're quite a distance from the island. It couldn't be. Ah! Wh what is that? Huh? What's going on? And like a typical East game, we have a boss battle. And it's a doozy to start off with. What is that thing? <laughs> At this rate, the ship will be destroyed. Dodge. <laughs> Tentacle of the Unknown. Adol! And here's our uh, super uber sword from Adol! East 5.
So at least we have a good weapon for this first fight, even though we're only level one. So yeah, it's going to tell us exactly how to do this. So we can lock on. So we're doing a shit ton of damage to this thing already. Uh, now it's telling us how to evade. We got one hit on it. Pretty much we're just going to have to evade here. Oh, I got it twice. Supposedly this thing's only level four, but it's got a crap ton of hit points to deal with. Ah. Oh, I didn't dodge out of the way on that one. That's okay. Yeah, they're just telling us about dive attacks. I've been doing those already. Oh, I didn't job jump out of the air fast enough. Out of the way that time. Oh, we broke it. Oh. oh, I just missed it. Now it's dead. Okay, we killed it. I mean, it's a tutorial fight. It's well, fairly easy to do. A skilled one. Wow, so dashing. That was amazing. Nice work. I can always count on you, Adol. What was that thing anyway? Looked like a tentacle from some kind of giant squid. Typical uh, East. <laughs> Here, have fun. Tutorial level. Fight a Kraken. Or a giant squid. That is a crazy list. Oh God. Someone help me. <laughs> well, so much for that, uh, Isidro sword. And now the obligatory anime intro. Big ass 
dragon bird thing. So for the most part, during cinematics, I'm just going to let them play without talking over them uh, like I did there. I probably should have said that that's the expectation. Um, but yeah, when for the most part, as uh, as cinematics and other movies are playing, I just like to let the game play. I'm not uh, obsessive about always talking over every single moment. Where am I? He seemed to wash to shore on some unfamiliar beach. Yeah, that 500 square kilometer island with that two kilometer tall mountain in the middle. There are no signs of other people. All you can hear is the gentle sound of crashing waves. Well, look at that. Rusted sword. Let's go grab that. We're on the nameless coast. This is where we start. Among the debris that is washed ashore, you find an old sword sticking out of the sand. We actually don't have a whole lot left of this part one. We're, we're about to wrap up with this particular introductory chapter. Will you take the old sword? Yes. Yeah, no, I don't feel like actually uh, playing this game. We're just going to sit on the beach without a weapon and die. I love how it even gives you the option. I think Chrono Trigger has a couple of those too. It gives you like a yes, no, and if you hit no, nothing just happens. There we go. And they're dead. Oh, is that it? Okay, I was gonna say. Adol learned a new skill and they're gonna explain how skills work. Yep. So we start the game off with a skill. This is actually a really nice skill that works for this game. I may as well at least explain some of this stuff of stuff. You need to be on your guard here. Set your skills just to be safe. I think they're gonna make me. Yeah, they're just gonna make me do it. So we'll do the Sonic slide. One of the nice things about this is over in the left in that or sorry the lower right corner of the screen here it'll even show you what the area of effect of that is some kind of go straight forward some have bigger area effects and different arcs and so it's nice to actually see it i'll just demonstrate what that looks like here because it doesn't force you to be in a battle to uh activate that you've been adrift for so long that exhaustion's starting to set in it's dangerous to stay here continue on ahead and now one of the best themes of, of any game starts. I absolutely love this theme. So we start off with level two and here's the attack and it goes forward as we see, just like that. It's cool. I do love this game. So one of the biggest aspects of the game is exploring the Isle of Sirens. So we can't move this. Doesn't look like you'll be able to move it. I think this takes like 20 people to move. So these are obstacles that eventually, as you find more people, we'll be able to move these. And so yeah, let's just take a quick look around. There's a little mini mountain, but that's their, that big ass mountain in, uh, like I said, in the middle. I don't think it even, it's gonna give us a map. Yeah, it's not gonna give us a map yet. That's fine. 
So a lot of these games with East is all about learning how the patterns go, including, well, especially bosses, but even little mini, uh, you know, the normal monsters like this, it's all about getting their patterns down. Adol found a clear water stream and drank from it to quench his parched thirst. With each sip he took, Adol's exhaustion slowly washed away. And gives you kind of field recovery. Uh, so it doesn't work in, you know, dungeons. But basically, this is one of the very long time traditions of East. If you're in a field and you just stand still, your HP gauge will just slowly raise on its own, which is so helpful. Um, but yeah, once you're in dungeons, you need to bring medicine and other healing items to kind of make it work. Let's continue on ahead. But at least while you're getting used to new areas... Ah. Wow, how did that not hit me? Oh, it hit the monster instead. I did not know those projectiles would hit. I mean, it doesn't do damage, but it hit them at least. That's enough out of you. You know, I've played this game like three or four times. It's funny how just now I realized that the projectiles don't go through. Um, oh, I, I must have. So we can drown in. Uh, okay, we can't drown in here, but you can go in bodies of water and drown in certain other areas. So I'm just exploring here. I'll need to make sure I did that later on when I revisit my playthrough. Because I'm doing this a little again, a little out of order. I just kind of came back. Uh, come on. Thank you. And that's a skill finish. So when you finish with one of your skills, you will uh, spend half of the SP required to actually do it. So instead of 10 as it sees over there, it will then cost only five. And so it's useful to, or I shouldn't say useful, I mean it is, but it's definitely advantageous to finish off enemies with that. You'll get your money's worth. That time I did it strategically because I wanted to hit both. And of course, when you defeat enemies, you can get um, items. Alright, so you. Whoop. Yeah, I jumped too late. Here's apple, or I think cherries? Yep, crewberries. Take one of those. Kill a couple of these monsters, because why not? How to kill him? We got red meat from that one. That was pretty nice. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of a cinematic, and we're about to find our, our first castaway. And it's um, it's a little bit of a Japanese trope. It occurs a lot in anime, but we're about to get it here. The nice sword. And of course. At least Adol closes his eyes. <laughs> and the slap. <laughs> Sees nothing, gets Word. slapped anyway. Why must men be so? And so in case it's not obvious, we have our first castaway who is also Madame Sundeer. A Sundeer for all Sundeers. Disgusting, tactless, and so domineering too. Later on in part two, oh, uh, one of the chatters mentions how she checks like pretty much every Sundeer checkbox you could possibly imagine. Yes. Just like him. Oh, 
And poor Adol's just like over it. There. I suppose I kept you waiting long enough. And so we meet Laxia, who is still in mo for the most part her Cordy's on um, outfit. The only problem is she doesn't have like the poofy part of the dress anymore. That didn't survive the shipwreck. My name is Laxia of House Roswell, a noble family of Garn. The ship I was traveling on sank, and I was cast adrift until I came ashore here. Now, who are you? Judging from your garb, you must have been a sailor aboard the Lombardia. And she's right. I'm Adol Kristen, a temporary sailor. Adol Kristen, you say you're a temporary sailor? Is this some sort of ill-conceived ruse? I narrowly escaped that disaster with my life. I don't care if that was your first day at sea. You need to tell me what exactly happened out there. Tell her the legend of the Isle of Siren. Explain that any ship that approaches the island sinks. What was your name again? Adol, was it? Do you honestly believe I would fall for your tall tales? How big a fool do you think me to be? Oh, wait a minute. Do my eyes deceive me? Why do you remind me of... Oh, look at that. More beasts. Beasts? When did they... Oh, and it's so soon. Just leave this to me. No need. I don't need to be protected by the likes of you. I, Laxia von Roswell, shall enter the fray. And this also suffices as a tutorial for damage types. So Adol deals slash damage and she deals pierce damage. We're eventually going to find allies who deal strike damage. And so you get this like rock, paper, scissors mechanic with certain beasts. And it's kind of helpful to keep in mind. Um, and yeah, this is just going over that particular detail. Now there's also a break mechanic. So if um, you're attacking an enemy that's weak against that damage, you might get to that break state. Like that happened at the end of the tentacle. I should have explained that while we were actually fighting the tentacle monster. But there was a point where the tentacle kind of went down and there was like a star above it. Well, that's because I had broken it and it was just like kind of just incapacitated briefly. And you can kind of, when you break your enemies, you can just get a nice opportunity to wail on them for a few minutes. Well, usually a few seconds, but still, it's just open season for a minute. And then you can also tell them to be offensive or defensive, depending on what's going on. And then I could also switch between them if I so chose. I do shit damage against these guys. But I do good damage against them. So now we'll go after these guys. Laxia does good damage against them. Thank you. Just like so. took you for an ordinary sailor, but your swordsmanship is rather impressive. Clearly, it was no accident that you managed to parry my attack. Okay. And you're not too shabby either. Your flattery won't work on me. Based on our current situation, this area must be the territory of those beasts. Let us relocate somewhere safer, Mr. Kristen. You seem to know a lot about beasts. Uh... I'm just speaking common sense. Let's get one thing straight. Given the circumstances, a temporary alliance is our only rational course of action. But I don't trust you. Not one bit. Do we understand each other? Good. Um, stop wasting time and get moving. Laxia joins the party. Despite the uh, inauspicious beginning, Laxia is, is a character I really do like in this game. Um, and like I said, this is probably one of my favorite, 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 favorite East games. Um, and that is a good place for us to end this particular, oh, we could go into skills and equip her, but this is where part two will begin. 
And so I welcome you to advance to part two. It should be part of a playlist. Hopefully YouTube will just play this automatically. And uh, I believe that wraps up our little intro spiel here. So why don't we go into the system? I will exit to the title screen. We don't need to do any of that. And I don't think there's any other um, necessary part of this outro, but just make sure I get my uh, my bases covered. Um, again, the whole YouTube social convention. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all the first nerd stuff down below. It helps grow the channel. It's a great time. Uh, if you want to watch me live, feel free to uh, tune in on Twitch. All of the description on that will be in the description of the video. Uh, same for like uh, my Twitter and um, my Twitch socials. And I welcome you to uh, accompany me on this wonderful adventure through East 8 Lacrimosa of Dana. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you again. Cheers.